and his sons' wives, and all these people came out. You know what he did? You know what what Noah did? The first thing, what well, first thing he did after he came out of the ark, he built an altar. Verse twenty. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. What did he do? Built an altar. What is building an altar symbolizing? Sacrifice, worship unto God. So this is exactly the same concept you find in Genesis one one. What is that? In the beginning, God. The first thing what Noah did was he wanted to thank God. He wanted to have a fellowship with God. So Noah, the first thing he did after he got out of the ark was he built an altar. So that's another great lesson that we learn from here. There's one verse I want you to look at, verse twenty-one. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, "Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood." Do you understand? From childhood, his inclination is evil. Now take any religion, any culture. I haven't ever seen any parents of non-Christian origin telling their kids to lie. You don't find that. Then why does a child lie? Why does he tell a lie? That's the sinful nature. There's a sinful nature. I'm, 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 I'm surprised at this uh, rhyme that we teach the children. Johnny, Johnny. Yes, Papa. Eating sugar. No, Papa. Telling lies. No, Papa. Open your mouth. All sugar in his mouth. What are we teaching the child actually? We are teaching the child a lie. Is it not? He's eating sugar and then he's telling lies, and then we tell this rhyme to the kid and then teach him. We don't understand that we are actually teaching the child. You can lie; it's okay. Children lie. Do the parents teach it? No. Then where did he get it from? That's the sinful nature. Okay. Then chapter nine. Chapter nine, verse one: Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. God said to Noah, "Is this the same promise God gave, uh, command God gave to Adam?" Yes, yes. He gave the same command to Adam. Okay, and then he said, "What? I will not punish the earth with the water again." So how does he? What is the sign he has to remember that he should not punish the earth with the uh, water? Rainbow. I put a si- sign. Verse twelve. And God said, "This is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you, and every living creature with you. I have set my rainbow in the clouds. So when I see the uh, rainbow, I will remember the covenant between me and the earth." Okay? okay, all right. All right. Then, you then you find, find uh, verse twenty something that happened very uh, terrible. Noah got drunk. Noah got drunk and then did what? He went into his tent and he became drunk and he just lay naked and. Uh, one of his sons, Ham, saw his father naked. What did he do? He went and told his two brothers and said, "Hey, you know what? Dad is lying there naked, man. You know what these two brothers did? Shem and Japheth. They said that's not right. So they took a sheet and covered their dad, and they did not look at his nakedness. Did God bless what they did? Yes." God blessed what these two boys did. Did God curse Ham for that? Yes. 
he did curse Ham for that. Okay? You find this with Noah's prophecy in verse 24. Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the God, Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be his slaves. Okay? So you find that what these people did in a family, in a house, had repercussions for the rest of the humanity. I told you Shem, Ham and Japheth are very important characters. Because these are the only people through which now the children can be born. And one of them was a cursed man. Do you see the line of curse going through? Right? It all began with what? Disobedience in the Garden of Eden. So that's how Romans 5.12 says, Through one man death came. Okay? And then chapter 10 is a very interesting chapter. Now you, will, uh, you can pick up the sheet I gave you that tells you about the genealogy and how these have the contemporary names here. In chapter two, chapter 10 verse 2, you find uh, the sons of Japheth. You find Gomer. Gomer uh, from Gomer, the genealogy of Germany came. Magog is Russia. Medai is where the um, Hindus came into existence. Javan is where you find Greece, Italy, Spain and Portugal. You find this Meshek. You find Meshek in verse 2. Nothing but Russia. Okay. You find Tyrus is nothing but Italy. So these are the contemporary names. I, I, uh, I would want you to keep this with you so that you understand how all these races came. Okay. And then you find another important character in this genealogy. In Noah's family, verse 8. Cush, the father of Nimrod who grew to be a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod was a hunter. Okay, he's an important character in this scripture. And you find his relevance in book of Revelation also. There's one thing I want to share with you in verse 25. Chapter 10 verse 25. Two sons were born to Eber. One was named Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided. His brother was named Joktan. You know, the earth was divided. What do you mean by earth divided? That's when the continental drift started. You find the uh, uh, scientists telling you that the earth as it is today was not exactly how it began. There is a continental drift. The earth is moving apart. Okay? It's moving apart. And th those days, this is what happened. The earth was moving. Okay? And therefore it's called Peleg. Now, uh, why do you think God allowed this movement of uh, earth? Why do you think God allowed the movement of earth? Because God already said what? Go in. Spread and multiply. Right? And now God is also getting this earth to cooperate with His promise. But I want you to see what some people are trying to do. When God is telling us something to do, there are some people who will go against what God said. Right? That's what you find in chapter 11. Great lessons to learn from chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar. Shinar is Babylon. And settled there. What did God say? Go, multiply, spread out. What did these people do? Settle there. Now, please remember, in 1025 you see the earth already? Separated. So, so one group of people are separated from the other. Now, the people who are separated from one another, at least these people should understand and try to spread out. What did they do? They wanted to come together and stay around one another and settle at one place. Verse 3, they said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tartar for mortar. 
then they said come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth what do you think here it's a diametric defiance against god's plan what did god say go fill the earth and these people said no secondly they wanted to make a name for themselves they wanted to make a name for themselves 